guys, it's your boy, Barca boy 103. Today we're gonna be reacting to the Barcelona news over the past 24 hours. Firstly, a quick update on the Lewandowski saga. Barcelona are preparing an offer at some point this week. They will put in a new bid for Bayern Munich for Lewandowski and they hope that Bayern Munich will accept it and Barcelona and Lewandowski are confident that this deal will happen before they go out on the US tour on July the 15th. Another forward that Barcelona want to sign this summer is Rafinha. The operation is back on track with of course the help of his agent Deco. He wants to bring in the Barcelona this summer and also Leeds United have lowered their demands for Rafinha this summer as well and Barcelona have promised him they will sign him this summer. Now of course the players coming in, players will have to leave the club this summer and Frankie de Jong is getting closer and closer by every single passing day to joining Manchester United. Manchester United are preparing a bid for Frankie de Jong at some point this week and it should meet the evaluation that Barcelona have set for him. 100 million euros in total plus 80 up front and 20 in add-ons and also Manchester United want to give Frankie de Jong his exact same wages currently at Barcelona making it easier for him to decide to leave Barcelona this summer and Manchester United are under huge pressure to reach an agreement with Barcelona at some point this week and lastly we do have a big and I mean big update on Ansu Fati's injury and it's not looking too good it's looking so bad to the point he's being compared to Samuel Umtiti but before we get into it make sure you guys smash that like button down below let's try to get the 300 likes in this video It'll be very much appreciated and also if you're new make sure you subscribe down below if you haven't already and let's get into it let's start off with the transfer news over the past 24 hours and the first player that we have been linked with is of course the number one target and priority signing for Barcelona this summer Robert Lewandowski now first he's coming in from sport they've come out saying that Lewandowski is convinced that Bayern Munich will see the reasons and start negotiating with Barcelona very soon and Barcelona want to have him for the preseason tour in the United States which starts on July the 16th and the main reason they want, they want him of course is to sell tickets to sell shirts and bring up the enthusiasm around Barcelona will it be happening by then I think this deal will happen by then but it will be very difficult of course because Bayern Munich still are kind of not wanting to sell him but also know they kind of have to sell him if a good offer comes in they're kind of in the middle at the moment still very unclear but in the end Lewandowski and Barcelona are confident that they can get this deal done before then now apparently the new bid will be coming in at some point this week and build in Germany have come out saying that Barcelona are preparing a 50 million euro offer for Lewandowski which they hope will make Bayern Munich consider selling the striker now 50 million is too much, man. Sport came out saying that it will be 50 million, but it will be 40 as an initial plus 10 million euros in variables. Look, the most, the maximum offer I would make for Lewandowski is 40 million euros plus 10 in add-ons. That is it. I would not offer 50 as a guarantee. That is too much. He's 34. Yes, I get it. He's the best striker in the world. His body is like a 29-year-old, whatever, but it's not. On paper, he's 34 years old and he is not worth 50 million euros. Keep in mind, by the way, he has one year left on his contract. Next summer, he'll be free. 40 million, 10 million years in add-ons is the most I would go. I think Barcelona will probably offer 38 plus 10, maybe 37, somewhere around there. Keep it low, then they'll come in with another bid. But I'm just hoping to God that we do not overspend because, of course, we need money elsewhere as well. So wait and see. But again, Barcelona and Lundesky are confident. They can get this deal done before, the, of course, the U.S. tour. And apparently, a new bid will be coming in this week in the region of 50 million euros. Now, along with a striker, another position in the attack that Barcelona were striking this summer is, of course, the right wing. And right now, Rafinha is the priority and his operation is back on track. Sport of Kamal saying that Juan Laporta transmits to Rafinha that Barcelona will have the financial muscle and they will look to sign him yes or yes. Leeds United have reduced their demands from 65 million euros to 50 million euros. Barcelona for the moment are offering 40 million euros. Again, like Lewandowski, I would not go over 40 plus 10 in variables for Rafinha. I talked about this yesterday in the live stream with Balgarna Planet. There's going to be other Rafinhas coming in in the next few years. He will not be, he's not like, you know, a generational talent. We have Abdi, we have Collado. We should be careful with the money that we have this summer. Again, the defense, in my opinion, is the most position we should be strengthening in. Of course, alongside the attacker, Lewandowski, his signing will pretty much pay for itself from the shirts and all that sort of stuff. But for Rafinha, I hope we don't overpay as well. I've seen a lot of people say, oh, 40 plus 
add-ons or 40 plus another player maybe they still want Mingeta or Ricky Puch that could be an option as well but we'll wait and see but the most important thing is that Barcelona are now back on track for the Rafinha operation and that Leeds United have lowered their demands. Sport also came out saying that Deco has informed Laporta that Rafinha Pires has moved to Barcelona he is also blocking approaches from other Premier League clubs and Barcelona say that if Deco was not Rafinha's agent he would have already signed for Liverpool or Chelsea. So again, Deco has been so important in this whole entire operation. Personal terms agreed back in February because of Deco and he's telling Rafinha, look, just wait a little longer and Barcelona will be in for you. And apparently now Rafinha is very happy with that and he wants to join Barcelona. There's no shadow of a doubt, but if, of course he does not sign for Barcelona, he could go elsewhere. We're hearing also Arsenal and Tottenham are very interested in him as well. Now Gabriel Sanz from Deportivo came out saying that Deco will meet with Barcelona next week or this week, should I say, to clarify Rafinha's future. He still has Barcelona as his priority, but other clubs, especially Arsenal, are also interested. Leeds United have not received any firm offer from any club yet. Fabrizio Romano came out saying that Barcelona need to be quick if they want to sign Rafinha as English clubs like Arsenal are back in the race but no official offer has been made by anyone and Leeds have no plans to change their 55 million euro price tag for him. Now, I think 50 if we can get there with add-ons this deal could happen but if Leeds want 55 straight up no add-ons I don't think this deal is worth it and I also don't think the deal will happen. Now Phil Hay who we all know is the top journalist around Leeds United he came out saying that Rafinha has ruled out the possibility of staying at Leeds until the World Cup and then leaving the club. So apparently Rafinha is saying look either I leave now or I'll stay for Leeds at least for the rest of the season and maybe not stay until after that and then leave as a free agent. So if you're not saying look if Leeds want to sell you gotta sell me now or else I'm gonna be planning to leave as a free agent in 2020. We'll have to wait and see. I think Barcelona want him. I know Xavi wants him. Laporta, of course, made this, pro made this promise to Deco a few months ago. Personal terms agreed. It is now down to Leeds United. Of course, if they got relegated, Rafinha would have already been a Barcelona player by now. I can guarantee you that that release cost of 25 million euros would have been activated. So wait and see. The operation is back on track now with these economic levers coming in. And Barcelona want to sign Rafinha, but of course, at a good price. Now, along with the attack, another priority for Barcelona this summer is to reinforce the defense. Firstly, in the center back department with Jules Kunde being the priority. Now, Nathan Gibson, who is a very reliable source around Chelsea, and also DeMarcio have come out saying that Jules Kunde is a priority target for Chelsea this summer, and he welcomes a move to the English club. And Chelsea are in regular contact with Kunde's agent, and they share a good relationship. So it's not only Barcelona that won Kunde. Chelsea are also in the race and keep in mind they do have the financial power over us their new owner Todd Bowley is going to be spending a lot of money this summer they will give what Sevilla want and we right now and Barcelona right now are kind of reluctant to give what Sevilla wants. So again, I would say at the moment, Chelsea do have the upper hand. But if Kunde can choose, of course, he will choose Barcelona. And personal terms with both teams will not be an issue. Now, Gabriel Sanz Mundo Deportivo came out saying that Barcelona have Jules Kunde's approval. But Sevilla wants 65 million euros and no player swaps, which makes now the operation for Barcelona difficult. And Barcelona will, of course, not enter a bidding war. And Carlo Koulibaly is the alternative option and Napoli want around 35 to 40 million euros if we if man I don't know this is a tough one to be honest I think 65 for Kunde is a bit too much but the problem is that Chelsea are saying yep we'll pay that for you right now no worries whatsoever and that's the problem if Chelsea were not in the race it's just us and Sevilla we could have brought that down to maybe 55 maybe 60 but with Chelsea's in the background saying we're here we'll pay it right now it makes the operation difficult for Barcelona and again Koulibaly half the price but also about what eight years older than Kunde as well not really that versatile I would take Koulibaly 100% no doubt about that for me either these two center backs would be a world-class signing in my opinion but of course the club Juan Kunde for the experience in La Liga, younger and also can be in the future way better than Koulibaly. So I'll wait and see. No doubt Barcelona want to sign another center back alongside the already signed Andres Christensen. The question now is who will it be and for how much? Now along with a center back, the club want to also sign a new right back this summer, especially after not renewing Danny Alves' contract who has left the club as a free agent. Now of course the top priority is Cesar Aspilicueta, but Mundo Deportivo came out saying that Aspilicueta does not consider handing over a transfer request 
to Chelsea. Aspilicueta's priority is to join Barcelona and Barcelona wants to sign him but he wants to leave Chelsea in a respectful way and trust that he'll be allowed to do so. So Barcelona here are taking a big risk. They think that look in the end Chelsea will let go of Aspilicueta but the problem is that Thomas Tuchel and Chelsea want to keep him. He's the club captain but Aspilicueta will not force the move. He's gonna walk up can I leave? No, you're staying. Okay, I'll stay. Yes, you can go. Okay, thank you. The board know he wants to leave. And of course, Aspilicueta wants to leave as well. He agreed personal terms with Barcelona back in January during the January transfer window that he would sign as a free agent. But then he played some games and some random clause got activated. Now he has another year left on his deal. I think this operation will happen in the end, but it's down now to Chelsea. If they say, yes, you can leave, he will leave. If they say no, he will not leave. He will not put up a fight at all with Chelsea. And that's a big problem for Barcelona. They have gambled a lot on the fact that they will sign Aspen de Cueta. They renewed Roberto. They let Denis Alves leave. And of course, this future is still in doubt. So we'll have to wait and see. But we have been linked with another right back as well, who in my opinion is of course better. And that is Pedro Porro. Reports coming in from Portugal are saying that Barcelona, Real Madrid, and Atletico Madrid remain interested in the right back Pedro Porro, for whom Sporting want at least 30 million euros for this summer. Now, he does have a 40 million euro release clause, but it will give us a 10 million euro discount for him this summer. I think he's a good right back for me at Man City, of course. But to be honest, we're already spending money on Lewandowski, on Rafinha, on you know, Alonso, Aspen de Cueta, Kunde. We don't have that much money. I think this operation is too difficult for Barcelona this summer. There are other priorities. The club would rather have Des and Roberto at right back then sign Pedro Porto for 30 million euros. I will tell you guys that for a fact, for free. So wait and see. I think Pedro Porto is very, very unlikely, but we have been linked with him. But again, the priority is Aspinacueta. Now, a position for Barcelona this summer that isn't the priority at the moment, but it could be later on in the window when there's more money and there's more clear idea of the squad is, of course, the midfield. Now, Gabriel Sanz and Wendel Bordivo came out saying that Barcelona are looking for a player who can replace Busquets or to be his alternative now, but they know that it's very difficult to find a suitable hair. The profile and tactical intelligence like Busquets is not easily found. And again, Martin Zubimendi is the main target for that replacement for Busquets. The club now know he most likely will leave as a free agent in 2023 next summer when his contract expires. And now the search for the Busquets replacement begins. Of course, the ideal replacement is probably Rodri from Man City, but that is impossible to get him out of Man City. They will ask for so much money and I don't even think Pep will let him go. He's about to actually sign a new contract in the next few months as well. At the moment, the cheapest and most likely option is of course Zubi Mendy, but he's about to renew his contract with Real Sociedad. If you want him, we gotta go for him now as soon as possible, but of course, there is no money for that. So we'll wait and see again. It's going to be difficult to replace Busquets. I do think alongside Messi, he's probably the most impossible replacement for any team and anyone in the world. I think Busquets replacing him is pretty much non-existent. Of course, you can go through the youth because, of course, Busquets came from the youth. But Busquets is a one-of-a-kind player and replacing him is impossible in my opinion. Now, we have been linked with another midfielder as well who used to play for Barcelona that can play the Busquets role. But his move is now ruled out is Rafinha. I told you guys yesterday's video that ESPN are saying that Xavi wants to sign him this summer, but Gabriel San Simón Deportivo came out saying that Barcelona are not interested in bringing in back Rafinha Alcantara. The player's environment denies any contact with the club and sees a return unlikely in the future. So again, nonsense report. I just brought it up yesterday because I thought it was funny. So now I gotta let you guys know the follow-up of that report. Rafinha will not make a return to Barcelona. And again, the search for Busquets replacement begins. But the real question is, when will Barcelona sign the Busquets replacement this summer or next summer but no doubt the search has begun but the midfielder who has the highest chance of joining Barcelona this summer is of course Bernardo Silva and his arrival depends on the sale of Frankie de Jong now over the past few days I had a lot of questions about oh why can't we not just swap Frankie with Bernardo directly with Man City and then Frankie would say yes it would be much easier and I would say no because of course it's not possible because the only reason why we're selling Frankie is financial reasons and when Deportivo came out back at me they came out saying a swap deal between De Jong and Bernardo Silva is not being considered by Barcelona although De Jong likes Man City Barcelona preferred to receive a transfer fee for him and they're waiting for an important offer from Manchester United in the coming days which of course we'll talk about in the next minute but again for Bernardo Talks have begun with his agent Jorge Mendes on that possible move. Barcelona are anticipating that they will sell Ricky De Jong in the next week or so, and they want to replace him 
with Bernardo. Again, a swap deal with Man City is not possible because, of course, the only reason why I was selling Frankie is to balance the books. So, wait and see on Bernardo. It's looking very good at the moment, but again, we have to sell Frankie Neon first, then we'll talk. Let's now discuss the players who have been rumored to leave Barcelona over the past 24 hours. Firstly, of course, the main one, Frankie De Jong. Now, the CEO of Manchester United, Richard Arnold, was speaking to Man United fans in a local pub, in a local restaurant in Manchester, and he was recorded on video secretly what he was discussing with those fans. Apparently, those fans went to his house to protest, and he said, look, let's go down to the pub and let's discuss face-to-face. -face. And you know, the video is already out on Twitter. You can go see it. Pretty much what he said in, in Barcelona Care About is that, look, we have the money for Frankie de Jong. We will get him. The board are very confident in doing so, and money is not an issue. Well, obviously it is because for the past month and a half now, you've been negotiating for us for an extra 10 million euros off. So, again, with these leaks, I think the deal is pretty much done. I think there's no way United can walk away from this deal. They will look like absolute fools. And, of course, their new manager, Eric Ten Hag, considers Frankie de Jong an absolute priority. Number one, marquee shirt seller. What Lewandowski is for us, Frankie de Jong is for them and they cannot walk away from this deal. I think in the end, they will make that offer that Barcelona won 80 million euros plus 20 in add-ons to reach the 100 million euro valuation. And again, the CEO Richard Arnold has said on video to other United fans that they are very confident that this deal will be completed. Now, of course, the main reason why Barcelona want to sell Frankie de Jong is to get rid of his wages. And Xavi Navarro came out saying that Barcelona would gain 60 million euros in salary limit with the sale of Frankie de Jong. Again, he's going to be on 400,000 euros per week from his recurrent salary and of course the deferred salaries over the past few years. He's going to be on a buck little money and of course it doesn't really fit the system and he has been, you know, over the past year I would say he has been performing to his expectations of course and right now there's no doubt it's the best time to sell. If you don't sell him now, you got to stick with him for the rest of his career. It's either we sell him now or it's never. And again, it looks like it's going to be happening this summer. For Bitsy Romano, came with the bombshell. He came out saying that Manchester United are discussing internally about submitting a new offer for Frankie de Jong in the coming days. It is a serious possibility. Talks of Barcelona, of course, are currently ongoing. And Manchester United are prepared to offer Frankie de Jong the high salary which he would earn at Barcelona next season, or else they would know they would have no chance of signing him next week, or of course this week, could be important for the possible transfer. Now, two big things here. Number one, the salary. They will give Frankie de Jong exactly what he's earning right now at Barcelona. That way, he can't really say no. And of course, secondly, there is going to be an offer because Manchester United this week will be releasing their finances and they want to hide that, of course, with the signing of Frankie de Jong. As you guys all know, Manchester United are owned by you know, a company or it's called the Glazers and the Glazers are in the owner's names and pretty much they have to release next week their, uh, their share prices, all that sort of stuff to show the fans like, oh, we still own the club, all that crap. And it's going to be looking very bad, of course, because their, their value has been dropping a lot over the past few years and they want to cover that up with the Frankie de Jong deal. For me, it's next week. If next week there's no bid, the deal will not happen. Again, it has to happen before the end of this month. If we hit July the 1st and Frankie Dion is still a Barcelona player, he will stay so, I believe, for the rest of the summer. Right now, this is it. This week is crunch time. If the deal is going to happen, it's going to happen this week. So subscribe down below, get on Twitter, follow me, follow everyone else, because this deal is either going to happen this week or it's not going to happen at all. Now, a player who Barcelona are desperate, and I mean desperate to get rid of this summer, is of course the French center back, Samuel Umtiti. Now, Sport have come out saying that Barcelona are considering to give the letter of freedom to both Neto and Umtiti in order to save on their salaries. Last year, interested in signing Neto on a free deal, but Umtiti's case is more complex. He's open to leaving, but very few clubs at the moment are interested. Now, firstly, on Neto, I think in the end, he will leave free agent, letter of freedom, or even a straight transfer. I think this summer he will leave. He's not like, you know, Umtiti and Braithwaite and Long Lit and PN. It's not really a mercenary, but in the sense that he wants to go out there and be a number one and also get some of that money from his Barcelona contract. So what you see on Neto, I think there's no real concerns at the moment. Letter of freedom, whatever it may be, he will leave the club this summer. But for Umtiti, of course, it is a different case. Gabriel Sanz, when Deportivo came out saying that Samuel Umtiti is open to leaving Barcelona and the club and his agent have been working hard to find a destination for him. But the problem is that nothing has materialized so far. Nevertheless, they hope to find a quick solution. 
What's different about Umtiti this summer is that now we're hearing reports that he wants to leave from the beginning. You always heard from the beginning, oh, he wants to prove the coach wrong, he's going to go cry to the president. Then you hear the last couple of days he wants to leave but can't find a club and in the end he ends up staying. Of course, this time his salary is a bit lower with that contract renewal until 2026 that we did back in January to, of course, register Obama Yang and Ferran Torres and Adama and Denny Alves, John Umtiti for that. But now the club are really pushing for his exit. If you're a betting person, I would put a good bet on him staying because there's no one that wants him. We're begging for Lyon to take him, his former club, of course. He has a connection there. He's a homegrown player, so they may take him back, but he has big wages, doesn't really want to cut them, and of course, he has one knee. So, when see on Samu, I think his exit could be possible. It's been probably this is probably the most likely summer that he will leave the club, whether it's a loan, transfer, letter of freedom, whatever it may be. But the problem is again that no club wants him and he rather sit at Barcelona, train every single week and not play, then of course be a free agent without a club. So we see on a Titi, but again it's gonna be very, very difficult to get rid of him this summer. Let's now discuss some contract renewal updates around the first team at Barcelona. Just one update and that's on the one whose contract expires in 10 days. Usman Dembele. Now Mundo Portivo have come out saying there are 10 days left in Usman Dembele's contract renewal and his future is still undecided. Barcelona are clear they would not improve anything in the last offer while Dembele trusts that Barcelona can take another step with the approval of the economic levers. So apparently Dembele thinks that Barcelona will make one more final renewal off with him now with the money coming in but in the end it is not that clear. Barcelona have put their final contract offer on the table and I'm wondering Where's the belly gonna go? Bayern Munich don't want him too much money, and of course, you know, behavior problems, injury problems. PSG don't want him because the sporting director does not trust him, and again, salary, injury, all that behavior stuff. Chelsea were always in the race because, of course, his former manager, Thomas Tuchel, is the current Chelsea manager, and he really likes him. But Nathan Gigson, of course, very close to Chelsea, and Demarcio have come out saying that Chelsea now have doubts regarding Dembele, especially because of his injury record, and they seem to prefer Raheem Sterling over him. However, the matter is still active. Dembele has no intentions of accepting Barcelona's current offer on the table. So two big things there. Number one, Chelsea are going for Raheem Sterling. They put a bid in of 25 million euros and it has been rejected. They will go in again. He is the priority winger for them and Dembele is the backup. And also second thing, Dembele has no intentions of accepting Barcelona's current offer on the table. This renewal is not happening, but again, by every passing day, you're thinking Barcelona is his only option left. Will he take that offer? I have no idea. But again, the only contract he has right now is from Barcelona. No other team wants him. United, PSG, whatever it may be, no one wants him. Chelsea are kind of there thinking, look, worst case scenario, we'll get you, but you're not our number one target and priority. And again, it's all pointing towards Barcelona. Now, of course, the reports coming in from France saying that Dembele's priority has always been to extend at Barcelona and he will wait until the final day. So again, we already knew this. He wants to stay at Barcelona, but of course, for the right price. And finally, Luis Rojo. Of course, from Marca, still a top source around Barcelona, even though it's, he writes for a Real Madrid paper. And he's come out saying that Xavi has asked Barcelona to make one more final attempt to renew Dembele's contract. I mean, how many one more attempts have we had so far? Like 20, like... It's getting ridiculous at this point, and I know for a fact that, of course, Xavi loves Dembele. He came in on his first press conference as the Barcelona manager after he was announced on the pitch, saying that Dembele is the best winger in the world when he's fully fit and focused. Of course, he wants to keep him. And looking at Rafinha being, you know, 50 million euros, is that really worth it? Are Barcelona going to pay it? Or are at least going to let him go for cheaper? I mean, I can tell you guys this for a fact. We will have either Dembele or Rafinha. Well, I hope we have Dembele or Rafinha as our right winger next season. The question really now is, who's it going to be? I think there is still a chance that Dembele could stay. But again, 98, 99% Dembele will leave the club this summer as a free agent. But there is that 1% chance that he could end up staying. Now, the final topic that I want to discuss before I end off this video is give you guys an injury update on Ansu Fati. Of course, Ansu Fati at the moment is not injured. He has gotten the medical green light from Barcelona, but apparently he is still not back to 100% fit. Of course, he went out on Spain international duty for the Nation League and did not play a single second. Now, Ben Aid, who we all know is a very, very reliable source, top 10 in Barcelona without a shadow of a doubt, he's come out saying that Barcelona believed that Ansu Fati should have undergone the surgery for his recent hamstring injury and that he did a big mistake not under <clears throat> and that he did a big mistake not undergoing it. Five months after suffering that hamstring injury, he is not yet ready for competing at the highest level. In fact, he is far from ready. 
what did I tell you guys back in February? Him not doing the surgery made no sense. I get it. You got traumatized last time, blah, 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 mentally, physically, my family. You only get one chance in life to become a footballer. When you get that chance, you have to grasp it. The surgery made perfect sense. They said at the time, we do the surgery, you never get this injury again. If we go natural, this will be a problem over your next few years. And he said, I want to go natural. That's his problem. I'm worried. I, 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 if you guys look at my old videos, go look at December, January, February, where I talked about Ansu Fati's injuries. I said it and I'll say it again. I am worried. I cannot see Ansu Fati competing at the top level again. In my opinion, he is an injury prone forward. And guess what? We got more worse news. Javi Mingel, very close to Xavi. And of course, in terms of medical news in Barcelona, he's number one. He came out saying that Barcelona's medical staff are worried about Ansu Fati's physical condition. He is not 100% fit. People at the club do not understand how his entourage not accept their recommendation to undergo the surgery. Can he do the surgery now? Yes. Will he do it? Probably not. He is too deep into the fact that he's going with the natural treatment. I will say this. If we go on the American tour and he does not play that much, I think he's finished. There has been this comparison about his uh, in injury being very similar to Samuel Umtiti. I think that's a too, I think that's a bit far fetched. Of course, Umtiti got his whole entire meniscus removed. Ansafati only got a big, a small part of it. So people are comparing it to it, and I think it could get to that level in the sense that he never plays for Barcelona again at the top level. I am very, very worried, and of course, this is why we have to keep Memphis Depay at the club, keep Ferran, maybe even keep Adama, and maybe even have Dembele as and Rafinha in the squad because Ansu Fati is not reliable. Thank God we renewed his contract last year and put him on like 80k per week if you don't play a game because he's if, if, imagine we gave him the money that he wanted he wanted around 120 just for not playing we gave him look 80k a week when you're not playing and then we'll give you 120 when you are playing thank god for that so wait and see with ansu but to be honest guys i am very very worried i think this summer will be very very important for him in terms of you know preparation for the for, for the uh, upcoming season if we come the first game of the season and he's not starting he's on the bench I'm going to be worried. I think this season upcoming is going to be make or break for Ansu Fati at Barcelona. Of course, the club will always trust him. He has a number 10 shirt. We will, everyone knew we had to give it to him. He has that talent, of course, fully fit. He's probably the best player in Barcelona, but that's a question. Fully fit. He never is. So wait and see. But let's hope for the best for Ansu and that he fully recovers from this injury and becomes the best Ansu that we all know he can be. So that was my reaction to the Barcelona news over the past 24 hours. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, make sure to leave a like and of course leave me your thoughts down below in the comments on everything we discussed. The main thing on our first list, of course, on the Lewandowski saga and mainly being around his price. How much would you pay for him, including add-ons? And do you think this deal will happen before the U.S. tour, which Barcelona and Lewandowski are hoping for? Secondly, on Rafinha, same question. How much do you pay for him? And secondly, with his agent Deco being on our side, do you think Barcelona have the advantage and could sign him this summer? Thirdly, on Frankie de Jong. You and I both know this deal is happening. The question now is, do we get the right package and the right deal for him with the right money? And secondly, do you believe that Barcelona will invest that money back into his replacement in Bernardo Silva and finally your thoughts on the main story in my opinion over the past 24 hours the injury of Ansu Fati do you believe he'll be back fully fit ready to go for the start of the season or do you believe this is the start of the end of Ansu Fati at Barcelona and of course make sure you guys subscribe down below if you haven't already and I'll see you guys next time on the channel take care and force a Barca <laughs>